Now in the second part, part B, we're told that the probability that a student has an IQ of at least 100 plus K is 0 0.2090. And I can represent this on this diagram here. I'd always suggest you draw the diagrams. So we've got a value here which is 100 plus K. And the probability of being more than it, that's that area there, or represented by that area there, is 0 0.2090. Okay, that's the probability that X is more than 100 plus K is equal to that value. If I extend that line down to there, then the corresponding Z value, which I'm going to call Z1, which measures the number of standard deviations, remember that this value is above the 100, okay? We've got to work that out in a minute. I'm just going to shade that in. It's got the same probability then here, and it will be 0 0.2090. Okay, so how are we going to find out K? Well, what we know at the moment is that the probability then that Z is more than Z1, all right, more than this value here, we know is 0 0.2090. And so we're going to have to work backwards from in the tables. And the tables, remember, give us this area to the left of the Z1. So that's going to mean that the probability of being of Z being less than Z1 is clearly going to be 1 because the whole area is 1 minus 0 0.2090 and working that out that's clearly going to be 0 0.791 now in tables this is often represented as the phi of Z which in this case is Z1 is going to be 0.791. So what we've got to do is look up in the tables where we can see this point 0.791 for phi of z. So if we go to a set of tables, something like this, we've got our columns then phi of z, and we're looking for 0.791. Okay, and looking through here, it's obviously in this column. So I'll just have to scroll this down, and here it comes, 0 0.791. And the corresponding Z value is 0 0.81. So we are then 0 0.81 standard deviations above the mean with this value. So in other words, from the tables, we'll just put from tables, we find that therefore Z1 equals 0.81. Now, since we know that Z is always equal to the observed value minus the mean over the standard deviation, it therefore means that our Z value is 0.81. And that is equal to the observed value, which is this value up here, 100 plus K. Then we subtract the mean, which was 100, all divided by the standard deviation, which remember was 15. So put 15 there. And working this out, okay, the hundreds cancel, we just get K over 15. So therefore, we have 0 0.81 equals k over 15. And to simply work out k, all I've got to do is multiply both sides by 15. So doing that, k equals 0 0.81 times 15. And what that comes to is 12.15. And we're asked to quote k to the nearest integer. So this will obviously equal 12 as long as I write to the nearest integer. Okay, and that brings us to the end of part B and to the end of this question.